Hey guys, I'm back. And what we're going to be covering in this tutorial is what I just left off with in the last one. So we're going to be making our enemies explode. So right now, our game is working with our missiles colliding with our enemies. So when our enemy is just about to disappear, what we're going to do is we're going to create an explosion movie clip right where the enemy uh, was last positioned. And that explosion clip is going to animate out and then it's going to remove itself after it's finished playing its animation. So let's get started on that. I'm going to go into Flash first and I'm going to create an empty movie clip. So to create an empty movie clip, you hold down Control and press F8. And yeah, it's pretty much just like creating or turning an object into a movie clip, except this is going to create a blank one. So I'm going to call this clip MC Explosion. And I'm going to export it for ActionScript with the class name of MC Explosion as well. Go ahead and press OK. And this is our blank movie clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the timeline. And I'm just going to draw out a really you know, crappy looking explosion graphic. So let's start with an orangey type of color and let's dial that brush up a little bit. There we go. So not very artistic, but uh, it'll get the job done. Okay, and I might just size that down a little bit with the free transform tool. Just hold down shift and alt, scale it down proportionally. So we'll start off our explosion small. And what I'm going to do then is go to the next frame and press F6 to create a new keyframe. And then I'm just going to grow that explosion out a little bit. Maybe give it a little bit of a rotation. And keep doing that for about, say, five to seven frames. So just grow it out a bit. Rotate it, go to the next frame, press F6. Now let's grow it out again with Alt and Shift held down. And just rotate it a bit again, just like that. So do that for a few frames. And for this one, I might actually rotate it and shrink it a bit. So we've got our simple little explosion animation happening here along these frames. And we've also exported our clip as MC Explosion. So let's go ahead and create a skeleton class for that now. I'm going to go back to scene one and save my movie. Let's head back into Flash Develop. And in our project section, I'm going to right click and add a new class called MC Explosion. So this is a movie clip type, so I'm going to click Browse and make it the base class of movie clip. So we'll come back to this class in a second. Let's just get the explosion happening first. So the most logical spot to put an explosion would probably be where the missile collides with our enemy, right? So if we look in our first game, go to our outline, we've got check missiles hits enemy that function that we made last tutorial. And what we're going to do here is look for where our current missile is hit testing our current enemy. So if that equals true, this is where we remove the missile and the enemy. So before that happens, let's well create an explosion. So just like we did oh so long ago when we created our missile on where our player is, we need to do a couple of things to get our explosion to happen. And the reason why I'm doing it up here is that we haven't yet removed the enemy yet, which is destroying over here, so we can still get the enemy's position. And I'll explain why we need that in a second. So create an explosion. First thing we need to do is create a new explosion instance. or explosion instance or movie clip. So the next thing we need to do is obviously add it to the stage. Whenever we create an object, it's not visible until we add it to some sort of display object. And finally, we need to position our explosion so that it appears where our enemy is. If you just add something to the stage, it's going to appear in the zero, 00 coordinate, so it'll add up here. So let's position 
our explosion to our enemy. And that'll pretty much do for now. So let's fill in the code for that. So create a new explosion. I'm going to create a new variable called new explosion. And it's going to be data type to an MC explosion class that we just created. And let's create a new MC explosion. Okay, then let's add our explosion to the stage. So I'm going to say stage add child and our new explosion variable name. So remember, I'm not adding the class name, we're adding the variable name. And finally, let's po position our explosion to our enemy. So our new explosion is a movie clip. So its base class was movie clip. So that means it has X, Y, opacity, visibility, all those properties of a normal movie clip. So we can say new explosions X position is going to equal our current enemy's X position. Okay, and same deal with the Y. So our new explosion Y position is going to equal our current enemy's Y position. Okay, so when our missile hits our current enemy, we'll get a new explosion, it gets added to the stage and positioned. But there's a small little problem with this code, and I just want to show you what's going to happen. So let's test our movie. Control Enter. And I'm going to keep firing, and yeah. So there's a little bit of a problem with the explosion, and that is that they're animating, they're doing their job, but they're not quite going away. So let's fix that up. So for that, we need to do a little bit of theory on timeline. So I'm going to get a new explosion, just drag it out to the side of the stage here, and go back to my selection tool. So when we're animating a movie clip, we have frames. So frame one, two, three, four, five in this case. What happens is, as soon as we add that movie clip to the stage, it's going to loop through, and as soon as it gets to the end of a movie clip, it always jumps back to the start. It's just a default flash behavior. That's how flash has always worked and pretty much will always work. So what we need to do is we need to tell this movie clip instance, as soon as you're done playing, so as soon as you've reached your end frames, let's remove you from the stage because, you know, you've served your purpose. You know, it's been a good run, but uh, we don't need you anymore. So, yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to go into my first no MC explosion um, class so what we need to do here is we need to first test just like we did with our missile and our enemy that our explosion has been added to the stage so check if our explosion has been added to the stage so for that I'm going to add an event listener and we're going to be listening to added to stage and I'm just going to run to on add for that. Let's go ahead and create that function. So here we can start setting up our code, but what I like to do is just create a little initialize function instead. So I keep the code out of this on add, and if I ever need to rerun it, I can just call initialize. It's just a thing that I've been doing for a while, so feel free to follow along or just put your code in here. Okay, so what we need to do once we know that our clip's on the stage, we need to test every frame if it's done playing. So let's add an enter frame event listener. And let's call it explosion loop. It's not really a loop, but you know, it'll do for this purpose. And let's create that function. Okay, so how frames work is this little pink doohickey thing here, little square box, this is called the playhead. And this is what our current frame um, property of our movie clip is. Like if I type, let's go to flash develop for a sec, this dot current frame, because it's a movie clip, uh, this whole missile, sorry, this whole explosion is subclassing the movie clip um, class current frame is a property of a movie clip so this is how I can access the current frame or what frame our playhead is up to there's also another method called total frames so this is however many frames is in our animation 
So in this case, it's five, but we could have more. We could have up to 20, we could have 50. You know, we don't want to hard code in 50 or 20. We want to just know how many total frames there are, and that's how we can get it. So what we need to do, and what we need to check every frame in this explosion loop is if our current frame is at the final frame, or the total frames, then let's remove our explosion clip. Because once this playhead, oops, once this playhead gets up to here, the current frame is equal to the total frames, so let's get rid of it. So let's put the code in for that. If this object's current frame is equal to this object's total frames, then let's remove our movie clip explosion. Now remember, whenever we're removing something with an event list or uh, with an enter frame, we have to remove the event listener for the enter frame as well, just like we did for our enemy and our missile. Okay, so to remove our clip, exactly the same as our missile and our enemy, we target what parent the object's been attached to, and say remove child this object. And finally, to remove our event listener, we can just type remove event listener, and our enter frame is the one we want to get rid of, which is currently running the explosion loop. Okay, so that's our MC Explosion class pretty much done. Let's give this another test and see what happens now. So I'm firing away, and look at that. We get an explosion, and it kills itself off at the end. So that's working pretty well. Okay, so what we need to do now, after this explosion's been done, uh, we need to get some sort of scoring happening. and we might even put some sort of uh, ammo counter in the top right because you know you, you don't want the game to be too easy you want the user to have some sort of you know accountability rather than just mashing the space bar down even though it's just a basic game it's a good little feature to learn and figure out so in the next tutorial we'll add a ammo counter and a score object and we'll see if we can fit both of those in for that one so uh, yeah stay tuned for that one cheers